What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to be discussing how to extract frames or images from a video. So basically, we're going to be taking a video and extracting the images or the frames from a video. So what we're going to do is, I've downloaded this movie from the open domain, public domain. And let's see. Yeah. So, uh, Linda! Thanks for picking me up. Yeah, so this movie is basically open source or in the public domain, so anyone can download it and do whatever you want with it. And it's uh, an hour and 31 minutes. And we're going to be extracting the frames from this video and we'll save it into output. So with that said, let's uh, take a look at the code. So the first thing we'll do is we'll import CV2. Now, I think this is the first time I'm using uh, OpenCV with you guys. So you need to install it. And I think the way you install it is this. So pip install OpenCV Python. So you install CV2 with this, if I'm not mistaken. So we will import a bunch of modules, uh, CV2 logging OS random string. Now, I did not use logging in this video. I was going to update some of the parts with logging because I recently created uh, videos on logging, but I didn't get a chance to update this video with logging. Yeah, so no logging in this video. Uh, import OS, random and string. And um, random and string is just going to be for this function ran string where we create a random string, which we're going to use as part of a file name. So I've made a video called random file name generator, which basically goes over this code. You guys can check it out within the Python script. All right, so that's just the first function, random string. Now length of video, if we want to get the total amount of frames in a video, we use cap.getCV2.cap prop frame count. This is a built-in function in CV2, so all we need to do is use that function to get the total frame count. Yeah, so basically just use this function and you can get the total frame count for a video or movie in this case. All right, so now we're going to look at the bulk of the script, this main function, extracting frames. So it takes a video path, save path, and skip frames. And basically the video path is path to the video, save path is where we want to save the frames, and skip frames is every so-and-so frame that we want to save. So we're not going to be saving every frame, here, we're going to be saving every 30 frames because saving every frame is kind of pointless. Movies are 30 frames per second. I guess if it's an action movie, you want to save uh, more frames. But in this case, I, I will just uh, save every 30th frame. So skip frames, once again, allows you to save every X frame where X is represented by the value you give to skip frames. All right, so just printing, entering, extracting phase. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to getting the file name of the video path. So if you look at the commented part, if we have something like this, by using os.path split, we could split the uh, complete file path into the directory and then the file name itself. So we get the file name and then the next line, we just get the file name without the extension. And what, what I'm going to do is add a random string to the end of the file name and then stick back the extension. So basically we're just creating a random file name in a slightly messy way. Check length is just calling the earlier function to get the total amount of frames. If the uh, total amount of frames is zero, that means either we're not accessing the right video or our video has no frames. If that's the case, we return a zero. So here's the, the bulk of the code. We're going to create a video object with cv2.video capture. So basically we feed in our path to the video within this uh, cv2.video capture, and we created a video object. And from the video object, we can extract frames. A count is just going to keep count of the frames. Random string is just the earlier function. We're going to create a random string to add to the file name. So here is how we read each frame from cap video object we created. All right, so usually I just test the first frame to see if it's okay. And if it's okay, then I'll loop through each of the frames and extract all the frames. But basically, a cap.read extracts a frame. So here, if we use uh, cap.read, we're extracting the first frame and we get back two objects, uh, ret and frame. A uh, ret is a Boolean value and frame is the frame itself. So a ret checks if you correctly got back a frame or not. So if ret is false, you didn't get back a frame. If ret is true, you got back a frame, which you can save as an image. So that's the first line, a ret and frame. So every time you read from the uh, cap 3 object, you get back a ret and a frame. And the ret checks if it got back a true frame or not by sending back a Boolean value and frame is the frame itself. 
Now this test file path is just the save path to the first frame that we're going to save. So os.py join save path is just the root directory of our, the root directory for our save path. And then we create a file name by adding a random string and the count, the frame count. So it's just a messy way to create a file name so that we can save it with a unique name. All right, now to write the frame, we use cv2.imwrite. So imwrite will take the path, which is this path we created, and the frame itself and write to it. And then we check if it was able to write the path successfully. OS.path that is filed, we check if the file path was saved correctly. And then this message should actually be logged, print saving test frame was successful, continue extraction phase. Now here's the important part. We're going to be extracting all the frames. So count is one now because we passed the test frame. The first frame is the test frame and count will be incremented to one. And now we're going to iterate through each of the frames as long as ret is true. So if the first frame was uh, successful, ret should have the true value. So if ret was false, then this would not activate. So this loop would not activate and would basically skip this loop. But we have this uh, Boolean check here above uh, if always.path is filed to check if ret was true or not. If ret was false, we would never get a file. So that earlier check always.path that is filed checks if there is a frame that was saved correctly. All right. So as long as this is true, we're going to continue reading from cap. So while ret is true, we're going to read from cap, we get back a ret and frame. Now every time there is an actual frame, we get back ret as true. And then we're going to make sure it's the 30th frame. And if it is, we're going to be saving that. So we're going to first make sure if it's ret, if it is true, ret returns back a true value. And if count uh, modulo skip frame. So this modulo is basically checking if there's a remainder. So say something like four modulo 2, 4 divided by 2. Is there a remainder? In this case, no. You get back 0. So if it was something like 4 modulo 3, 4 divided by 3, you get back a remainder of 1. That's basically what modulo is doing. So in this case, if the count is a multiple of our skip frames, so either 30, 60, 90, etc., we're going to be saving it. So this count modulo skip frames is basically checking if it's a multiple of our skip frames. And if it's equal to zero, then it's a multiple. So 30, 60, 90, 120 will all have zero remainders when divided by our skip frames. If it is, we're going to use CV2 IM right again. And this is the, the same block of code as above to create a random file name and we'll save it. And then we'll increment count by one. Now, if it isn't this, if it's not a frame that we want to save, we're just going to skip it and just uh, increment count by one. So our save file should be something like 30, 60, 90, 120, this count part, because we're only saving multiples of the skip frames. So that's basically it. Keep iterating through this, and eventually this uh, ret will lead to a false value because uh, there's no more frames to read. So eventually this uh, ret will become false and we'll break out of this loop. All right, and this else is just to this uh, if statement above. So we're checking if we successfully saved the test file. If not, there was a problem saving test file, encoding error, cannot save file, and return zero. And finally, after we're done with everything, we want to call cap.release. And then finally, cap.release will just uh, release your video object. So I guess you can free up some memory. Or uh, with webcam, sometimes you need to release the webcam as well. All right, so and then finished extraction, and that's basically it. So it's a very simple code. I kind of went through each line, even the non-essential parts about how to save file names, but hopefully that wasn't too bad. And now we're going to try it on this movie. So our public movie, our save path is going to be output, which is the folder I created. And for movie, in public movies, in this case, we only have one movie. We're going to extract a call extracting frames the movie, which is the file path to movie, and save path, which is output, and skip frames. You'll notice that with movie, I'm not putting the entire path because the movie is, is in the same directory as this uh, video to images. So it will find this path with no problems. All right, and we're going to be skipping every 30 frames. Now, I'm not going to do the entire movie, but let's just probably do the first couple of minutes or so. All right, so it's as you can see, it's going to be saving every... 30th or every multiple of 30 because that's what we assigned uh, skip frames to. Yeah, I guess this is enough. All right, we'll just close this. 
And now we'll take a look at output. So as you can see, so it saves every 30th frame. You know, if you need, I guess, data for your neural networks or whatever, this is a easy way to get a lot of images. So I guess that's it with this video. In this video, we learn how to extract frames from a video using OpenCV or CV2. All right, that's it with this video. I will see you guys next time.